Okay, so hi everyone. I'm Hideyuki Tai from NEC. Today our presentation talks about our learnings from uh, ongoing activities to build a high available IaaS platform based on OpenStack using Open Daylight. So since the last year, we are working towards integrating Open Daylight into our OpenStack based solution. So today we would like to explain about our activities to achieve this integration goal and also share some learnings from these activities in this presentation. So this is the agenda today. First of all, I would like to explain the background of our activities. And then we are going to give you our, some learnings from our activities with the results of our investigation, design, and development in this presentation. And finally, we would like to also discuss about the future direction of our activities, as well as the direction of the Open Daylight project. So first, let me introduce ourselves. I'm from NEC, and NEC is an IT and network solution provider. And we have been actively working in the SDN field from the very beginning. And uh, we released the world's first OpenFlow product, OpenFlow controller, and OpenFlow switch in 2011. And since then, we've delivered SD our SDN-based systems to over 600 customers all over the world. And as a founding member of the Open Data project, we also have been actively working and contributing to the Open Data community. So as a, as a solution provider, we provide OpenStack-based cloud infra infrastructure solution. We call this service as NEC cloud system. So this is a service which offers complete support for every aspect of cloud, infra cloud infrastructure, designing, building, and operating the cloud infrastructure. So based on customer based on customer use care, based on customer requirements, we build cloud infrastructure based on OpenStack as well as other many open source softwares. So one target use case of our solution is IaaS platform infrastructure as a service. And the current supported model of our solution is based on OpenStack, and it uses network manager available, available by default in OpenStack, which is OBS agent. And uh, I mean that our, solu our solution doesn't use any SDN controllers yet. So here, as a member company of the Open Daylight, the following question naturally come to our mind, that is, can we use Open Daylight? Can we use, can we integrate Open Daylight into our solution? Or does Open Daylight bring any benefits to our IaaS platform? Actually, that was the starting point of the activities of, of our team, which we would like to explain in this presentation. So why do we need to work on the Open Daylight project? So we are seeing several benefits which Open Daylight brings for our use cases. So first of all, I think Open Daylight, Open Daylight would bring more flexibility in terms of what you want to build your solutions. I mean, it makes it easy to adapt new technologies, and also it makes it, makes it easy to add new network features for your use cases. So since Open Daylight is a really a good SDN platform, actually it could be the de facto SDN platform in the future. So I'm thinking many vendors would add new technologies or new network features on top of the SDN platform, Open Daylight. So integrating Open Daylight into our solution would enable you know, to leverage such new, such new features or new technologies into our solution. And also, we are thinking that Open Daylight provide centralized management, 
centralized network management. So OpenDaylight could have, uh, you know, it enab open the open daylight would enable network management integrated with underlying network. Also, open daylight could have a centralized view of all of all your physical network devices as well as virtual network devices. So you can probably do better routing for your traffic with open daylight. And also with open daylight you don't need to rely on agent-based system anymore. I mean, so for example, you don't, need to, you don't need to care about the availability of agents such as obvious agent with Open Daylight. So considering these benefits which Open Daylight brings, so our team has been formed last year. And the goal of our team is to integrate Open Daylight into our IS platform. So to achieve this integration goal, to achieve our goal to integrate Open Daylight into our IS platform, we've done so many activities so far in the Open Daylight community. So our activities can be divided into several phases. So investigation phase, design phase, development, and integration phase. So in the, in the investigation phase, we investigated open daylight. We investigated how open daylight works with OpenStack. And we investigated how well open daylight meets our requirements. And based on the result of the investigation, in the design phase, we come up with, we came up with we designed the architecture in which Open Daylight uh, works with OpenStack well, in which Open Daylight uh, meets our requirements for our use case, IaaS platform. And after that, we did a kind of development. I mean, we tested Open Daylight to detect problems, to detect bugs for our use case, and also we fixed such many, many problems in the open data community. So that's, you know, overview of our activities so far. So, but that being said, actually, we've not, we've not, we have not achieved our goal yet. So we are still in the development phase. But anyway, I, we would like to, you know, explain our activities with our, you know, with our learnings from this experience in this presentation. Okay, so from this point, Venkat from HCL will talk. Hi. Okay, um, I'm Venkat Rangan, so I, I'm reachable in IRC as GV Rangan, so I contribute to uh, BTN and uh, uh, integration projects. So right now, so let me talk about the uh, activities that our team had done uh, towards this goal. So uh, as Hideyuki explained, so in the investigation phase, uh, This doesn't work. Sorry. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Okay. So the investigation phase. So uh, this is where we basically started. So we had a list of requirements laid out. Like this is what we expect out of Open Daylight uh, uh, as a networking provider for OpenStack. So we were evaluating what is currently available in Open Daylight and trying to see if these requirements. Uh, that's open daylight satisfy every one of these requirements and th this is the this was the goal of the investigation basically this is the overview uh, what was done and at the end of investigation we identified where are the gaps and then uh, to the upstream we started to you know contribute and fix those bugs and or gaps we addressed we we created enhancement bugs and we created regular bugs and we fixed them so these were basically what we laid out as 
what is actually our requirement so in terms of requirements we we wanted boron uh, we wanted to use uh, the boron boron release as uh, as our official release for this particular activity and these were the functionalities we are expecting uh, open daylight to be supporting so uh, basically no, the first one is basic l2 l3 security group support for open stack and then snat and support for metadata uh, and then bx and edge overlay and multiple external networks and bridging multiple L2 domains. So these were the list of requirements that we wanted Open Daylight to support to be used in our particular use case that we are targeting. And, and finally, of course, we wanted stable features uh, with Open Daylight, uh, which anyone would require. So basically, here uh, we are trying to explain uh, how the OpenStack and ODL integration works. So we have participated in two projects, VTN and Network. So from our understanding, basically all the projects that implement uh, uh, OpenStack integration actually use implement the Neutron interface and try to handle uh, uh, any Neutron calls based on their own implementation. For example, VTN creates their own uh, VTN components. So that when uh, when you actually spawn instances in OpenStack, these VTN components instead take over and they handle the networking. So the network also operates a similar way. So basically, uh, this is the layout on various projects that are uh, integrating with OpenStack. So here is where we tried to list uh, what was our requirements and how different projects were supporting it. So basically, at the time of evaluation, I think we the new network was something uh, that had just started in Boron. So uh, it was supporting most of the features that we required. But the only problem with we had with that was it, it was a code that was newly coming in and most of the features were not in by the time we were evaluating. So for those reasons, we uh, we had to go with the legacy network, which uh, which is which was already in place and was supporting partially the list some features that we are actually requiring but but the positive things about the legacy network were we were we have been testing it since the beryllium time frame so we definitely knew it supported uh, uh, it supported clustering and it supported uh, l2 l3 cases and it was it was fine because we also had a csit running which was quite stable uh, in terms of the legacy network so for those reasons we we chose legacy network as our uh, as, as, as the component that we want to use for our particular requirement. So uh, here we have listed why we chose legacy network as a target solution. So we had a part of our support and as I already highlighted, it doesn't support all the things that we, we basically required. It, it supported only part of it. But even still, what we understand is that the, the areas that it supported, it was seen to be stable. Because we had tested it, we had tested it in Beryllium, whereas the new network was still still coming. So we had a lot of code that was freshly being added. It was not complete. So uh, here, this slide uh, lists the functionalities or uh, whatever features that, that, that made legacy network as our uh, uh, target. So basically, uh, moving on to the uh, design phase, so uh, here, uh, Basically, um, having chosen legacy network, we understand that uh, legacy network comes with uh, its own limitations. So, uh, we definitely know it doesn't support testnet, it doesn't support multiple external networks. So, what we decided is since we, we want to use open daylight in our use case, so we thought we would leverage what are the stable areas that is available in legacy network and rest we will uh, leverage what is available in open stack. So, that was our uh, architecture that we went with. So, uh, we will use ODL just for handling the L2 and the security groups and for the L3 and, and, and the other features that we require, we would let uh, OpenStack, uh, the components in OpenStack uh, do that for us. So uh, this is the architecture that we planned. So here is where uh, Open Delete fits in. It handles only the L2 and security groups part. For the uh, L3 and other requirements, uh, the Neutron L3 agent is, is being used. So this is our deployment. This is, uh, uh, this is the architecture we chose for deployment. Yeah. Yeah, maybe we'll see how it goes. Probably there is a future direction. I mean, we are thinking because it comes with all the features that we require. So there is a thought in that direction. So maybe after Boron SR1, maybe this needs to be discussed further. Which lies to the internet, the communication, but with 
this aspect of maybe we can, you know, mean our grammar, the organizing department, our grammar, and also the it's kind of stable feature. So maybe in Bolo, we are still thinking about the using the organizing network. But in the future, for Kamo, it could be changed. Maybe we yeah, but uh, ideal choice in carbon should be to go to new network because people are going to stop contributing to legacy network and there are not going to be much new features that we can use. So the best choice would be to go to new network in carbon, but not immediately, I think. Yeah. So what do you use open data for working what I think only the L2 and security groups. Uh, open Daylight just now in our deployment it handles only the uh, L2 networking API calls from OpenStack and security group, security group, security rules from OpenStack. The, the other L3 and other stuff is handled by Neutron L3 agent. And those two are not covered by? Yeah, those two are not, because we needed SNAT and other features which was not supported in legacy network, so the, the Neutron L3 agent handles it. Okay. Uh, Actually, uh, after choosing this as our deployment, we, we actually identified some more gaps that needed to be fixed for uh, using this particular uh, uh, approach for external, multiple external networks and other things, so which we will probably discuss later. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so it's part of the development, so this is where it started. So with this, uh, uh, particular deployment model, we tested all our use cases and we had multiple stages of testing. So we identified bugs as well as some functionality gaps because having said we needed to use multiple external networks. So those use cases uh, actually revealed new gaps because uh, it, it was not the intention with the Neutron L3 agent. Neutron L3 agent is expecting some other agent which handles the uh, L2 part, so uh, basically it was not built to work with ODL. So there were some other gaps that we identified. So these were the major list of development activities that we did. So, so, so can you go on how do you implement Yeah, it was already there with network. We just used it. So, it, it does with flow entries. Okay, so I'll start with CSAT. So that was one of the first activity that we started because uh, uh, we have been with Open Delete since Hydrogen. So we completely understand the. Uh, this, the, the importance of CSIT, so that is where we started. So without a stable, stable CSIT, uh, much of the details of the project are not known. So we started with CSIT, so what we did is we created uh, uh, open, multiple OpenStack jobs. So there was no OpenStack job in uh, ODL uh, Jenkins environment, so we created an OpenStack deploy job. So this deploys multiple OpenStack nodes and it also deploys multiple ODL nodes and the features that we require are basically tested every day. So this helps us in uh, avoiding regression bugs and basically keeping the quality of the code. So, so we started this activity. So this is one key activity that we did for Boron. So this actually helps us in multiple levels, uh, not only for legacy network. So once we had this framework done, we did this, I mean, we added the framework as a common framework which other projects can also use. So all the projects that implemented OpenStack integration basically created a lot of OpenStack jobs. So now we are able to understand like uh, uh, with GBP, what is its OpenStack integration status based on the CSAT job. So, so this helped us at uh, multiple levels in making a choice whether we had to go with legacy network or new network. So this activity that we did uh, actually helped us a lot. Okay, um, so basically when we started the legacy network had a few limitations, I mean there was an ARP responder component, so which was enabled only when L3 was enabled, so our activity started with uh, making the ARP responder as default uh, and then uh, there were some problems in flow entries not getting cleaned up, so and then there were some, un un I mean unwanted broadcast to all OpenStack nodes, so such bugs were, uh, were reported and we fixed them. So this is where the initial activities and then, okay, so this is the key activity. So we had the, uh, the three node job running, but for some reason, whenever the ODL had a failover, we had the three node jobs failing regularly. So this was a long running investigation for these bug reports. So at the end of it, what we identified was there was a lot of notifications from OVS that was being handled. So this fix enabled, uh, as to you know, have a stable three-node job for the legacy network. 
So these were the fix that was done. So uh, the OVS was restricted to uh, send all notifications and the read operations for uh, every notification received was restricted. So by this way, we were able to stabilize the three node job. Okay, uh, this is the act. Okay, so this was an enhancement activity. So there was no reconciliation supported with the OVSDB. So whenever the OVSDB goes down and connects back, so there was no re reconciliation syn synchronization between uh, ODL and the OVS device. So we added support for such reconciliation whenever there is a connection flip flop. So uh, this was uh, another enhancement that we added. Okay. Coming to security groups, okay. Uh, security network had a security group implementation uh, using flow entries, uh, but there were some problems, some parity that we identified when we tested with pure OpenStack. That is, without ODL, uh, we had some testing for security groups, and we identified a few gaps where uh, network was basically enabling all communication for all VMs by by default, so that had to be restricted. So we created uh, bug reports, and uh, we we have tried to. Uh, come close to what OpenStack does in security groups, but uh, maybe there needs to be uh, some more improvement done. But we have right now, uh, for the identified scenarios, we have uh, done some fix where uh, the current legacy network implementation is able to mimic what uh, OpenStack does. So uh, actually this patch is right now in review stage, so we are targeting it to be released for Boron SR1. Okay, uh, so this is the uh, the other use case which we are talking about. So, uh, so this is basically a uh, okay. This is basically a seamless L2 connectivity use case. So this is this component that you are talking about uh, uh, the VXLAN gateway. It is similar to the L2 gateway component in OpenStack. So when we tried this particular use case with uh, uh, the legacy network we had a certain restriction as you can see the restriction the arp reply from the vm was getting dropped so to solve this we had to uh, we actually uh, uh, created a bug report and we reported that the unknown unicast uh, had to be learned so such a fix was done to a legacy network so this patch will also be available with the boron sr1 Okay, so this is the uh, use case that you are most interested with. So this is the uh, multiple external networks use case. So here is where we we started to see a lot of restrictions because in this diagram, if you see the BRint is the one that uh, uh, L2 networks in OpenStack uses that is handled by OpenDaylight, whereas BREX is the one that is used for external networks that is handled by the Neutron L3 agent. So since there is no coordination between them. Uh, we had we had some issues in uh, particularly running this use case so we had a detailed implementation which actually uh, uh, you can i mean there we added a parameter in configuration in odl which you, user can enable to say if i want to use multiple external networks with uh, uh, odl and legacy network you can enable the parameter so if the parameter is enabled what we will do is we will uh, we will create a patch port in brint, we will create a patch port in brex, we will install the appropriate flow entries so that user can now have multiple external networks and use the uh, ODL for L2 and Neutron agent for L3 and basically have this use case running. So this was one of the big developments that was done. Uh, so this will also be, this is also targeted for um, Boron SR1, it will be available with Boron SR1. So we have a wiki page that explains this particular use case as how it to be deployed and how it can be used. Okay, so the current limitations as we understand is, yeah, with the legacy network approach that we have taken, as I already mentioned, yeah, we are seeing lesser contributions because of the newer network. So uh, basically it is better to move new, to new network sooner. And also there are no performance or scale test currently available to evaluate whether it can scale or what is the performance currently, those capabilities. So such testing also needs to be added. Okay, and this was one of the lessons that we had. So whenever uh, we, we were checking the CSIT jobs on the health of the project, what we don't do is we don't check the health of the dependent projects. For example, uh, we never used to check what is the status of the OVSDB job or the OpenFlow plugin job. There could be a, some other failure in a dependent project job which will later affect us or there is some particular test case that we are not actually added to our CSIT that could affect. So our, under, our learning is that please check all the dependent, uh, dependent projects failures so that uh, there is a problem coming later which you may probably get to notice. Okay. So 
this is just, I mean, this is what we wanted to discuss the, what are the future plans. So, future is to uh, evaluate the new network. Uh, so, uh, that will happen sooner after Boron SR1. And basically add, participate in more uh, CSAT contribution to add more test to performance, scalability and longevity uh, for open stack integration. So, uh, these are our activities. So, if you have any questions, you can take it up right now. You, will you still require open stack, right? I mean, your question is once you move to new network, will you still require open stacks? I didn't get the question because both network is open daylight, right? I, sorry, sorry if I missed. Yeah. So we basically have a demo video of that multiple external networks case. So if you would like, we can play it out. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> would you? You can play the multiple external networks. Yeah. Okay, so this is a patch that is not yet merged. So here we have that particular attribute enabled. So we just trying to indicate. So it's a demo with OpenStack. So basically, from the demo, you don't get what is working, whether it is the OpenStack working or it's ODL working. <laughs> So here is where we have uh, tried to indicate that uh, we are enabling the L3 service in OpenStack and we are having configuration uh, for open daylight to for L2. And this is where we are creating all the external network and router in OpenStack. So uh, creating network subnets for internal networks. creating instances in both the networks and uh, we are associating floating IP. Yeah. So uh, now this is a display of uh, uh, trying to access the external network now. part where we have access the external network from the VM instance after associating the floating IP. So basically I can drag to the point where uh, where we had the network diagram. Yeah. yeah so this is the uh, thing that we achieved out of here. So we have uh, multiple external networks uh, that are interacting with the VM instances that are created in OpenStack. So we have a similar presentation for uh, security groups also where we have, uh, we have tried to demo what was available in Beryllium and what has been done. I 
Okay, so yeah, I think this shows barely on. Yeah. Okay, so this indicates beryllium, so it is using beryllium. So uh, here I think they are, uh, we are trying to display what was the shortcoming in beryllium. So basically, uh, even without uh, security rules, uh, beryllium was allowing uh, the network, legacy network implementation in beryllium was uh, uh, allowing access between VM instances, allowing to SSH and everything. So that is what is shown in the first step. So now there are no security rules which which are allowed. So uh, basically, it is supposed to uh, block all this. So uh, later on, I think uh, with the recent release, uh, now we have uh, added all this support where uh, only after adding security rules, uh, we the the new legacy network implementation will uh, allow the VM to ping and uh, other communication will be enabled. So without security rules now, all the communication from the VM instances are currently blocked. So I think it, they, they, they added a security rule to allow ICMP and they added a security rule to allow SSH. So I think they are uh, demoing both the protocols here. I think later on we will be playing all this demo in the demo theater also, so you are all welcome. So there will be uh, some more presentations on this topic in demo theater today and tomorrow. So thank you. So that's all I have unless you have any questions.